Good morning, happy Spookathon day one. So today's Monday, obviously day one of the readathon. I look tired because I am tired. My son did not sleep good last night, which means none of us slept good last night. Spookathon is a readathon all about reading kind of spooky books, thriller books. So I have this vlog for you going with you every single day throughout the week. Um, I'm gonna try to keep the week part short because there's not a lot during the week. There usually isn't. Like I try to do fun things with my son. And he also has therapies a lot and I also have to like try to teach him, especially with Halloween coming up because if you don't know he is autistic so Halloween is kind of a big deal because I'm really trying to like um, get him ready for it trying to like you know teach him all about it so that takes a lot of time so anyway so there might be not a lot of week fo footage but I could be biting myself in the foot by saying that there could be a plethora of week footage you all the books that I am reading for the spookathon I do have a TBR video if you want to check that out I'll link it right here and scream again by Earl Stein this is 20 harrowing tales this is like a middle grade anthology spooky stories I picked this one because I hopefully can fly through it I have the chilling adventures of Sabrina this is the comic uh, based off of the Netflix show coming out like next week i think which is amazing so i'm reading this in the perfect time this i have the dark descent of elizabeth frankenstein this is kind of a retelling of frankenstein this one is relatively short i think it's like 300 pages so that's not too bad i have broken things by lauren oliver this is gonna be my maybe book this is one that like i'm gonna probably save till the end of the readathon just because I'm not like super amped on reading it because I've been hearing mixed reviews and yeah, I'm just gonna, if I have time, I'll read it. If I don't, that's okay. My thriller I was supposed to read was Cross Your Heart by Sarah Pinborough, but I just had to change that up because I've just been hearing so many mixed reviews about it and I just don't want to like put myself in a reading slump because I feel like that might happen. So I'm instead reading Watching You by Lisa Jewell, which I just got in the mail. This psychological thriller, like a domestic thriller. I've already started it, really enjoying it. So yeah, and I'm also listening. I just started the audiobook of Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is eight hours. I do not think I'm gonna finish it this week because I'm one of those lamos that listen to audiobooks on regular speed. So I doubt this will be done this week. I, if anything, it'll be, I'll get halfway through it, which I'll take. So that's my reading plans. Get ready for another kind of boring week with me, but I'll be sure to update you on all of my reading progress, daily life progress, any boxes I get or book mail I get, and just, Things like that. So happy Spookathon day one. outside obviously Noah and I went for a nice walk this morning like a good mile mile and a half walk he played a little bit it's just a local park um and it was just so nice because today's actually feeling like fall um so it's feeling like the low it's the low 60s which I know is like if you live in some states every state is different when it comes to weather my state where I live does not really get much of a fall we just get like summer and winter pretty much so to this this is fallish to me so I'm wearing like my hoodie like I'm outside a lot. This is beautiful weather, so I'm embracing it. So, so my mom got Noah this jacket for his birthday. It's like a dragon or a lizard, as you can see, like with the tops of it. And got like a CC right here. It's got like this. Can we see your? Can I see your jacket? It's got, like a dragon or a lizard? I'm pretty sure it's a dragon with scales. I just look at it all the time and how adorable that is. I mean, like how adorable is that? I can't get over it, especially with the spiky tops. It's freaking adorable. And just like that, I look like a regular person, a put together person. Like I live in the fall person. I wish I did live in the fall, that would be great. Um, I just actually filmed two videos, which is why I look decent. Um, oh, I wanted to show you. So I got my uppercase box and the video will already be up by the time you see this. So this won't be surprising, but I mean, it'll be fun so you can see it. And I got this freaking awesome hat in the box. Look at this hat. 
It says ex libris. I don't know what that means. I think it's like library or book in another language. I want to say Latin. I'm not sure, but I freaking love this hat. It's Gryffindor color, German colors. I am both, so I love it. I'm gonna wear it a lot for fall and winter. I mean, goodness, I really like this hat. Just wanted to, I don't know, document that I look decent because I like to do that for readathons because the majority of the time I look like a hot mess because that's me. Look up hot mess in the dictionary and you will find enclosed picture of me. Um, yeah, so film two videos. Now I'm going to clean the destruction that is my house. Let me just show you. It's just, I have books on that table because my son likes taking all of my books and just throwing them everywhere. I have toys everywhere and it's just a tornado because I have a four year old and four year olds are also known as tornadoes that whatever room they go in, they just destroy at the drop of a freaking hat. It's annoying, but it's life. You know, it's mom life. Reading update. <laughs> I haven't done much reading today. I feel horrible. Also my hair, I don't know what it's doing. Um, I have some free time. My plan is to go ahead and hunker down, finish watching you. I will, um, that sounds weird, finish watching you. I don't know. Um, I will update you on my thoughts on that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just fly through Sabrina so I feel like I'm getting stuff done. And then if I'm feeling froggy, which I don't think I will, but if I do, um, I'm gonna start The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. So that's my plan. So if I do that, that's like, this is like over half my readathon. So that would be amazing. I don't know what's gonna happen. What is happening? My lipstick's all a mess. I, I'm just gonna lay in bed and read. I'm probably gonna put a face mask on to take this makeup off, sadly, so this will probably be the last time you see me looking decent. My socks I got, these I got from Alcrate from their like vengeful box. So I have, have a big box of book mail and I have two other packages. So let's open up with this box. This is from Riveted Simon Teen and this is Shelf Queens. It's got a lot of books in it, I feel like. We got a lot of stuff. So let's open up and see what's exactly in here. So first thing I see is Girl with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. Um, have I read anything by her? Um, this looks like a boarding school type of book. That's interesting, I have not heard about this. Um, we have Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. This is a huge book, like look how big this is. This does not come out till March. This one comes out in March as well. Um, this one, it looks like I'm gonna guess it's a fantasy, a thief, an officer, a guardian, all from different backgrounds but sharing one same destiny. That's interesting, how many pages is this? This is like, almost 600 pages this is a freaking chunker of a book that's interesting i have been wanting this book for the past year this is slayer by kirsten white it is based on the famous buffy the vampire slayer if you don't know much about me I have a lot of different loves in my life. Buffy is one of my first, if not my first fandom I ever fell in love with. It probably was. I have a special place in my heart for Buffy and I always will. I started watching it when I was like 12 and that's how young I was and I just love the show and I will always love the show. Pretty awesome. So this is not based, like Buffy's not the main character, but rather I think we have a new Slayer. Nina and her twin sister Artemis are, I think they're going to be, it's hard to grow up when you, it's hard to be when you grow up at the Watchers Academy. Thanks to Buffy, the, inf the famous slayer that Nina's father died protecting, is her father Giles? Did, I, or I, I doubt it, but still. Um, Nina is not only the newest chosen one, she's the last slayer ever, period. I'm so excited. This one comes out in January. You best believe I'm gonna read this. Like this is probably my first book of the year because I love Buffy, like it's an obsession. Um, then we have The Cold is in Her Bones by Peter Nell Van Arstel. I have never heard of this author or this book. It just says, Mila knows two things to be true. Demons are real and fear will keep her safe. That's interesting. I don't know much about it. And the last one we have is Crown of Feathers 
by Nikki Paul Preto. I don't know about this one either. This one was out in February. This says, I had a sister once. I promised her the throne would not come between us, but it is a fact of life that one must be killed or be killed. One must be one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled. Sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. It's an epic fantasy about love's incredible power to save or destroy. That is interesting. So those are the books I got from Simon. Other packages. This one is from Scholastic. Ooh, I think I know what this is. This is Snow in Love by Melissa De La Cruz, Nick Stone, Amy Friedman, and Casey West. Scholastic so kindly sent this to me. Um, it's four stories. It's holiday, as you can tell. And I'm very excited for this one because I, I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but I am planning a holiday readathon, like a Christmas readathon. That'll be an official announcement very, very soon. But um, I'm running it with some lovely co host This book, I'll talk more about it. But either way, this is going to be a big part of our Christmas readathon. So excited for this one because it's holiday ish and Christmas ish. And it's making me, I know we're in the middle of like Halloween season, but I'm so excited for this readathon because it's just gonna be all Christmassy and fun and oh so excited so I can't believe I have this and very very soon for my official announcement as well as all my other friends announcements on this readathon so excited last package I have is from Harper Collins I don't know what this is as well this is what it feels like by Rebecca Barrow that's interesting. I've heard about this book before. A girl named Dia who has a band, I think, and she wants to win Sun City, which is a um, original contest, I think. So basically, they're, it's all about a band and then planning a band and all the other stuff. It sounds awesome. It's a tender story of friendship, music, and ferocious love. Asks, what will you fight for if not yourself? That's freaking awesome. But yeah, that's today's edition of Book Mail. Sorry it's long. Like, this is a lot of freaking book mail to have. So excited for all of these. Mostly Slayer and the Snow and Love because of the readathon. I'm so excited. If you're getting excited too about that, I would love to hear. So, I'll update you guys later on my reading because I'm not reading right now, obviously. What a horrible vlogger I am. So yesterday was a big fail. A busy day full of like therapy, other stuff I had to do, just being out and about, not in the house. So I didn't have time to really vlog other than the unboxing. I also had a photo shoot last night, which is very rare for me to have a photo shoot on week, like weeknights because you know, it's mostly like family time, dinner time, not a lot of people want photo shoots. But the story with this photo shoot, it was a newborn session I did, just a quick one. I was supposed to take um, the girls that had the baby maternity photos two weekends ago so on Saturday right so Saturday we're getting excited and then she texts me at like 8 a.m. on Saturday the day of the shoot and she's like yeah I don't think the shoot's gonna happen tonight because my water broke and I was like what and it wasn't like a last minute shoot like she was still only 35 weeks pregnant so that's a pretty good time to get your maternity photos so it was a big surprise that her water broke so she went to the hospital she had a beautiful baby girl um of course because she was so early she had to spend some time in the NICU and things like that she's totally healthy now. we got home last week and we did some quick newborn photos last night which is really fun so that's just crazy how it works out that the day of her maternity photos were scheduled, she, her water breaks. Like how timing, what the heck. So, I think update, because I haven't updated you guys what I read yesterday. So yesterday, no, not yesterday, the day before. What's today? Today's Thursday. Tuesday, I finished Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This is a adult mystery thriller. I would say it's kind of light on the thriller aspect. It's basically about this like neighborhood that's on a hill in Britain and all of these different neighbors watch each other and they kind of become obsessed with one another and there's like three mysteries kind of going on in one. You're following a slew of people. I actually really enjoyed it. I don't want to say I was surprised I enjoyed it. I've never read a Lisa Joel book before but it like wasn't like super mysterious or scary. It was just really addicting. Like I wanted to figure out what this one murder was and then what this other mystery was it is you know it's an addicting read i don't think like if you're really into the mystery genre this might not be the book for you but if you want something light on the mystery front that's kind of just about a neighborhood and the ongoings of that and watching people i would recommend i hit myself in the face a little bit i would recommend it i gave it like a four three point i gave it like a 3.75 i enjoyed it i'm happy i read it this does not come out till December though, like the day after Christmas, so sorry about that. Didn't know it. <laughs> then after I finished that, I quickly finished The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. This is just a quick graphic novel. It's the first, ver first volume. I liked it. I didn't love it. I 
I'll preface by saying I'm not the biggest graphic novel fan. Like, I like them. They're just not my forte, I guess you could say. Like, right, I enjoyed this one. Um, I love the artwork, I think, was my favorite thing about this book. It had a lot of, like, gore and blood and things like that. And I enjoyed, like, the villain. And the ending was kind of just very shock-worthy. But overall, I'd say if you're getting amped as I am about freaking the Netflix show, I mean, read it. I don't know if it's going to even follow the same plot lines as this book. But time will tell. Happy I read it. I would give it, like, I don't know, like a 3.75, maybe 4. I just like the artwork. Um more reading updates. So I'm still listening to Sadie by Courtney Summers. I'm officially halfway through. So sorry my washing machine is going because I have to do laundry. Tis life. Um, but I'm halfway through it now. Really enjoying it. Um, yeah. I have nothing else to say about that other than I'm going to update you. I have started The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. That is upstairs. Also, today is my 10 year wedding anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's crazy. That's right. This old lady has been married for 10 freaking years to my husband, who you rarely see on the vlog. He's just not a camera guy. He's mostly in montages and stuff. He just doesn't like to be filmed, and I respect that, so I don't want to push a camera in his face all the time. But yeah, we're not doing anything this weekend for that. We're doing something later in the month for it because babysitters, things like that. But either way, I'm very excited to celebrate. Um, just, you know, we can't celebrate this weekend, but that's how it goes when you have kids you have to coordinate with schedules and who can watch your kid and things like that all that things i keep saying things 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 how you feel about being married for 10 years pretty good look how old we look uh, well yeah i, I look you horrible me right after eating too much red lobster yeah we got red lobster for dinner we brought it home um look like, a, like i'm look at my shirt <laughs>
I've been a horrible vlogger this week. I didn't vlog yesterday at all. We did lots of family things and things like that, but I have done a fair bit of reading. So I finished The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. This book is a Frankenstein retelling, I guess is the proper way to say that. I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I'm horrible, I know, but so I don't know like the whole deep plot of it. I know the general plot of it, so I don't know for sure if it's like a great retelling, but as far taking the retelling aspect out of it, other than I guess that it is a freaking star retelling, I did enjoy it. I wasn't wowed by it, but I wasn't expecting to be wowed by it. I'd say if you were just looking for a good type of spooky Halloween book with a Frankenstein twist, this would be a great book for it. It's only like 300 pages. This is about Elizabeth Frankenstein. She comes into the Frankenstein's life um, very early in her life. Um, she meets Victor and she's pretty much like, I guess, hired to be like Victor's friend because Victor is very odd and doesn't know how to make friends and just somebody to be a companion for him when he's really young. And so they grow up together and Elizabeth really molds herself into what Victor wants. You know, she doesn't want to be an orphan again. She doesn't want to go out in the streets and not know where life is. So she kind of makes herself in Victor's image. Whatever he really wants, she does. She tries to make herself perfect in his eyes. And so, and like just, I guess, irreplaceable and so time goes on and they're older now and Elizabeth is learning some disturbing things about Victor and things that he does you know his creations and laboratories and dead bodies and all that stuff you get the general Frankenstein part of the book now and she tries to take action so that's what this book is all about so I'd say if you're a diehard Frankenstein fan check it out um, if you're just looking for a good Halloween book check it out if you're looking for something really in depth and like just goes really into detail I don't know if it's for you but then again I don't know I would give like a three and a half out of five I'm glad I read it I think it was a great Halloween read wasn't too spooky it had a great Frankenstein element obviously and just yeah I don't have anything else to say about it sadly I don't know if I'm one of the only ones that were just kind of so-so with it you know that's how I feel about it so I finished that and I also finished Sadie's by Courtney Summers. As you know, I've been listening to this book all this week and it got to the point where I was only 100 pages away from finishing it and I didn't think I wasn't going to be able to listen to the audiobook for the rest of the weekend because of the family, not driving alone, a lot of that off. So I thought I would just go ahead and finish the last 100 pages because it is such a quick read and I did. I finished it. So I listened to three fourths of it on audio the last quarter of it I physically read. I don't know. But I really enjoyed it. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I highly recommend it if you're into mystery thrillers, even YA ones, because I'm not the biggest fan of any YA mysteries. Like, a good majority that I read, I do not like. But this one, I really enjoyed. It follows the main character, Sadie, and Sadie's younger sister was brutally murdered. He knows who the killer of her sister is, so she runs away to seek revenge. And then we enter in a guy named Wes McRae who has a podcast, a very popular one, and he decides to make a whole new podcast called The Girls in order to search for Sadie, to figure out her story about how Sadie's young sister Maddie was brutally murdered, and just basically that's what it's about. So it's half told from a podcast point of view, a podcast element like told in episodes, and half told from Sadie's point of view. I really loved it. I would highly recommend the audiobook because it's got the podcast yeah. element. They make it very much like a real podcast with music and like this podcast is brought to you by Macmillan Publishers and things like that and they actually have different a whole full audio a whole full cast of different people like interviewing things like that so I loved it for that regard as far as audiobooks and I enjoyed Sadie as a character she had a stutter and that was very interesting to read about because a lot of people have stutters and I don't feel like it's represented a lot in books so this was great to read a book with a character that has a stutter and it's, I mean, a lot of people were saying it was very dark and gritty, and I think it is dark and gritty, but I don't think it's, like, super dark and gritty where you're gonna have to, like, really, like, take yourself a ton of breaks from it. Like, I took occasional breaks because I was like, it's getting intense, but, like, it wasn't like super scary it's just about a girl that goes after her sister's murder and yes what involves with the person who murdered her is kind of gruesome and scary but that's real day life like a lot of that stuff happens sadly and if you read the book you know exactly what i'm talking about and what circumstances but it's just scary how much that happens but overall i really enjoyed it i gave it a four out of five highly recommend it definitely one of my favorite if not my most favorite ya mystery thriller the only thing i didn't love it that didn't get a why it didn't get a higher rating for me is because the ending the ending left so open-ended like it kind of ended abruptly especially from sadie's point of view i don't love how it was so open-ended like you can definitely 
use your guesses of what's happened to Sadie and you know how the ending is going but I wanted a more definitive ending because of the plot of this book so that's the one thing I don't love about it but the podcast element I love the characters I thought it was an intense read so I really enjoyed it so I have read officially now like how many books have I read I've read these two I've read Sabrina that's three and I've read Watching You. Have I read another one? I've read like four things this week. I'm gonna try to read and finish Broken Girls in the next day or so, but I don't know if I'm going to end up doing it. I'll keep you updated. Sorry for lack of vlog footage, but hopefully you're enjoying all the mini montages I have because because just everyday life. Don't be confused. You're probably thinking this is a regular video. It is not. I have just filmed um, like three videos, so I thought I would just quickly do my last update for you guys here because my camera's already set up and Matt has my other camera so I have to do on this one so yeah um sorry for this horrible vlog it hasn't been that great um especially the weekend the weekend was just not full of reading at all like it was kind of a bad reading weekend for me I didn't read anything yesterday I haven't really read anything today it's I feel a slump coming on a slump is here so I think instead of calling it a slump I'm just gonna take a break. We pick up a book a few days before October ends just so I can get a head start on my November read. I don't wanna say I'm like over reading kind of spooky um, mystery thriller books for October, but I think as always, each year I've noticed in these past three years where I've really put a lot of mystery thriller spooky books for October, I get very excited for them and do really well for them in the beginning of October and the middle and then towards the end of October, I'm just kind of, I don't wanna say over it, but I feel like it because I don't, I don't know. That's just how I am. And I'm just so excited to read the books I have for November. Like there are a lot of new releases. I am really looking forward to reading. Like I'm itching to start reading them now, but I don't want to mess up. Like it's so, I hate my, I hate myself for this. Like I only want to read those like spooky books for October because November I have a whole set of new books I want to read. So I don't want to start them now because I'll finish them before November and it just messes up with my scheduling. I know you think I'm crazy. I'm a scheduled person. It's just, I can't change it. Either way, I just, I'm, it's not a slump. I'm just going to take a break for three or four days. I will say I'm really interested in starting Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie Micklemore. So I'm going to think about starting that one, but we'll see as time goes on. So as of right now, I'm calling this vlog officially in because I haven't really done anything today other than film and I'm not going to really do any reading tonight. So let's just recap all the things that I've read this week. So in total, I think I have read four things. I forget what my life is. <laughs> and completed Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This is an adult mystery thriller. This completes the challenge of read a thriller, I think. Yes. Yes, I think so. So there's that one. I'm forgetting all the challenges. I have listened to the majority and finished the um, physical book of Sadie by Courtney Summers. I don't know what this fills the challenge for. Oh, is there purple on the cover? No, not that one. But anyway, I finished that one. I've also finished The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This one completes the challenge of read purple. Read a book with purple on the cover. Read a book with purple on the cover. And let's go ahead and do the spooky word, which I'll use dark. That'll be great. So that challenges of that. Oh, and this also completes the challenge for reading a book not set in your current time period. So thank you, Dark Descent Elizabeth Frankenstein. You fulfilled a lot of challenges for me. <laughs> Lastly, I read The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which completes the challenge of read a book with pictures in it. I believe that's all the challenges. So overall, as far as my progression goes, I wanted to read five books but I only read four. I did not get to Scream and Scream again, and I did not get to Broken Things. So I'm okay with the books that I read. I'd have to say my favorite out of this would have to be Sadie. Really enjoyed it. Thought it was an awesome book. After that, it would have to be Watching You by Lisa Jewell. Also really enjoyed it. I would say very light on the mystery thriller aspect. Then I would say The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I'd say if you're a big fan of Sabrina and you're really excited for the reboot or the Netflix original, I'd definitely check it out. And then lastly, I think my least favorite was The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. Time. But either way, I'm happy to read it because it's kind of a monster retail. But I hope that's good. I feel good about it. I just feel like I just need to take a little refresher before November begins. Because yes, I'm excited for all the no 
of them are books that I want to read, but they're all going to be very heavy books. I'm sure you can guess what a lot of them are. Overall, a good reading week. I read four books in a week, which is great, but yeah, I'm going to catch up on some work this week, catch up on some TV watching because I want to start a new show, so why not? And I'm just going to take a little bit of a refresher, which is always a good thing to do. I'd say avoid using the word slump, you know, just take a break. There's nothing wrong with taking a break from reading to kind of refocus your mind and just kind of rejuvenate. I think that's a great thing. So take a break if you need it. Don't, I feel like sometimes I push myself to read too much and times like these, which is right now, where I'm like, oh, I want to read all the books, but I feel overwhelmed. I just take a step back and take a few days, maybe a week to kind of just refresh yourself. Anyway, this is getting too long. Hope you guys enjoyed this Spookathon vlog. Um, yeah, it wasn't that great. I apologize. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later. It's a weird ending with a vlog in this setting because this is very unlike my vlog setting. But yeah, other cameras not available. I got to shut up. It's time for me to shut up. Bye.